right, check one, two, one, two. Hi, I'm Joey Navarro, and today I want to talk to you about the song Hermano. Hermano was released Christmas Day 2022 under Joan of Our Entertainment. Hermano features my brothers Art and David on vocals, along with myself. We have Rene Camacho on bass, Johnny Sandoval on drums, and Brandon Fields on alto sax. We recorded this song live, no monitors, at Martha's Doghouse Studio, Brandon's place in North Hollywood. Now, to get into this song, I got to give you a little bit of history. I grew up in Tolleson, Arizona in the 60s and 70s. Uh, both sides of my family, my mom's side, the Villa side, and Navarro's side, uh, there was a lot of us in Tolleson. So every holiday, especially the major holidays like Easter, uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, we would all get together at my grandmother's house. And uh, there was a lot of us cousins and it was a time of our lives. Uh, the food was always fantastic, and it was great to see everybody. Uh, but the music was key. We listened to a lot of Tejano music, Little, Little Joe and the Familia featuring Johnny Hernandez, Sonny Osuna and the Sunlighters. We got into a little bit of R&B, like Marvin Gaye and, and Tower of Power. But the Tejano music was really uh, our major uh, our major music. Um, now, Little Joe and Johnny are huge in this market. They were in the forefront. They've been at it since the nineteen or late nineteen fifties, I want to say. So, with that being said, the song "Hermano" is a Tejano waltz in Spanish, and um, it's it's a song about siblings. It's basically an apology song to my brothers for when I wasn't the best brother. And I've had the hook in my head for like 25 years, but I didn't have the verses. It's in Spanish, and I needed for it to be proper. And I couldn't do it on my own, so initially... I had uh, presented the song to Stephen Rudy Salas from Tierra when I was playing with Tierra, and they loved it. Problem was, is that English was also their first language, and uh, nothing panned out. So through the years playing with Tierra and El Chicano, I got to meet little Joe and Johnny Hernandez, and uh, I became friends with Johnny. So. One day I called him and asked him if he was interested in um, writing this song with me. I explained the concept and he loved it. So I set up a GoPro and recorded the session and it was fantastic. We finished everything within an hour, hour and 15 minutes. I conveyed to him what I wanted to say and uh, he put his own flair in it. I got to write this beautiful song with Johnny Hernandez. Nowadays, with social media, you need video and also a story to explain what's going on. So I decided to uh, set up a Zoom meeting with everyone that was involved in the recording process, uh, along with Johnny Hernandez. And this Zoom meeting uh, was intended uh, to talk about Hermano, but it became so much more. Johnny Hernandez talked about the history of Tejano music, which is really fascinating. And uh, we talked about his history with um, a few of the songs that just became anthems in our lives. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Sorry. Here. Oh, right here. Oh, okay. This we'll move that small out. Small one like, it is. Huh? Somebody got to bring a small one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I was going to do a small kick and just the snare. Okay. Uh, he, no, no, no. He said no, he said no symbol. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fine. That's good. So I was just going to put the SM7 on the kick and the 57 on the snare. Okay. Perfect. All right. 
Testing one, two. <laughs> freshy. It Looks is. like a freshy. I'm mighty impressed by Renee's lighting there. Yeah. <laughs> right on, Renee. Right. right on, man. Are you there, Johnny? I think I heard something. I see you guys. Oh, I there he is. Hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, I'm in there. You're okay, in. Thanks. There he is. Hey. 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 What's up, Johnny? So we got my brothers Art and David on 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 the line. Everybody, meet Johnny Hernandez. Everybody, what are you? Yeah, <laughs> nice to meet you, Senor. Yeah, Brandon Fields also is on the line. Yeah, Brandon, pleasure to meet you, Brandon. Oh man, yeah. And then the infamous Renee Camacho here with us. Johnny, <laughs> Mr. Tucson, <laughs> my brother, Mr. Tucson. <laughs> all right. Good to see all you guys, man. Yeah, man. Oh. I thank you guys, and what I want to do before we even get started, and I know you don't drink, Johnny, but we, we're going to have a, a, a traditional shot of tequila for everybody that's involved here. Nice. Got it. I need tequila. So, without further ado, I salute you guys. Thank you so much for doing this project for me. It's a, this is a, a monumental moment in my life. And to be able to capture us together in the same thread, whatever, this is just magical. Salud. 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 Hermanos. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Tequila does that every time I start speaking in tongues. Really? Man, so. <laughs> is Hardy on here too? Oh. Yeah. Every, yeah, everybody's here. Um, 
Johnny, you, uh, Johnny Hernandez, your music has been so important to our family. I'm extremely proud of having you here. Just uh, I wanted to express how important your con contributions have been to to me and my family, man. So thank you for that. I'm honored to be here, and uh, you know, just to um, talk a little bit about what you're uh, alluding to with the uh, music scene and the '60s. Um, the, the Latin years in 1970, we became La Familia and the whole movement. It was not just, it's a culture, you know, it's a lifestyle. It was protesting. It was uh, the uh, uh, Cesar Chavez, La Raza Unida. It all together, you can't separate it. And all of that uh, the, with our parents and your parents and, you know, the, the life that they had to live in order for you and me to be here today and survive and, and be able to do these things. Our parents were genius <laughs> at, at, at uh, yeah. you know, surviving, working, and uh, budgeting with very little. So that's what, that's what went into uh, our music because we're cotton pickers, you know? Yeah. And, and coming from that background and meeting with you and your parents it's what motivated us to to do the things that we were doing. It's really amazing. Um, your your book was a direct inspiration for me to uh, uh, to complete the uh, the documentary. Getting back to this uh, to this uh, song, it it just started with hermano querido hermano. Ay Dios mío, ya viejos estamos. In other words, we're just talking about about the history of family. But it was very cool for me to be able to explain to you because uh, you asked me, well, what do you want to say? I said, well, th these are the things that I wanted to express to my brothers in regards to, well, not an apology, but just putting our experiences into song. I, I'm still, I, I don't believe that it happened. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> I, I still don't, you know, because I was sitting in my room watching TV and and you called me. And uh, the, the funny thing about it, Joey, you write songs and we all do music. And uh, I write songs in, a, in two or three different ways. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I just play piano just enough to, to compose songs, you know. Right. Or I think of a, a song in my mind and it'll stay there for years until I record it, you know. And yeah. if there's a, a style, uh, 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 I, like if I say I need this kind of a song, I feed my subconscious and then it'll come out. Yeah. And that's the way, you know, but I had never written lyrics when someone said, it didn't, you weren't telling me this is the lyric in English. You were saying, this is what I want to say <laughs> in Spanish, you know. Right. And you tell me what you wanted to say. And, uh, I don't know how long we were on the phone, but when we were through, the whole song had been put together. And that's the first time I've ever done anything like that. Uh, and, yeah. and that fashion of writing. That's lyrics, cool. It, it was pretty magical to me. You know? it, uh, yeah. uh, that entire session was maybe about an hour, 15, hour and a half. It didn't yeah. take long, you know. Yeah. But that's because yeah. of your, your, your experience now. There's a couple of things I want to share here, okay? I, I want to show it to Brandon too because this is this was uh, the the via anthem.
siempre amargo dolor Pobre de mí Esta vida mejor que si acabe That's Johnny Hernandez there, man. Yes, Right? Connection. It's great. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and this is actually this is a, a, a re this isn't the, the original, right? Oh no, and you're not gonna believe this, but this is the uh I think the seventh recording of it. I I believe it. Linda Ronstan covered this tune. Yeah, but I've I've recorded it. Uh, the first one was uh, with the Legends with two horns, and then we did it, the second one on the first album we ever did, Por Un Amor, and that had three horns, and then I did it uh, live, and then I did it with the synthesizers, and then I did it uh, with Bob Gallarpa and the big orchestra. Oh, and, Bobby! Yeah, yeah. And then we did this for uh, for that album, Gracias a Gente redo it because i didn't uh, have the master and it's my signature song so every so a decade or so i re record it so that it's out in the market you know my i, I understand yeah. that but uh for, for the navarro family well primarily the via family which is my mom's right right away the 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 images of my grandfather my grandmother you know mm -hmm. all of us singing Pobre de mi, at any party dancing the, the Chicano two step, you know? That and 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 the smell of the food comes to mind and and then the uh, uh the, the adulation of just just celebrating this music and then three hours later then the fights. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what? You know I, um, I put I think I wrote in my book that uh, at least our hooligans uh as they were very as they were polite but do not start to fight until the last song so we wouldn't cancel the the dance out you know <laughs> we went to the next song yeah. they were yeah. okay, very considerate of them <laughs> oh, that's organization <laughs> good organization <laughs> skills man organized organized uh, fighting you know <laughs> uh, yeah yeah it was, See, that's what I was referring to a while ago when I was saying that why we did what we did, how we did it is because uh, I mentioned our background being from the cotton fields. That's a world of its own and a, a creed of its own, you know. And yeah. then going to travel throughout the state to meet people like us, like my parents, uh, that know that life and that grew up in that hardship and and then at the dances and Susan at the casino, man, and all over the place. And yeah. it just, you know, brought this energy about not just the music, but the energy was between the people and the band, uh, you know. And that's what created this whole atmosphere of what you were describing right now, your family, everybody singing together. And it, it, it's... Um, it's that culture that yeah. it, it, it gave me chills right now. <laughs> Let me see that. Yeah. yeah, I just imagine because you just, uh, I, I hope you realize how important you are. You, you are, you and Joe are like our Beatles. <laughs> you really are because, because of the, uh, of the songs that you guys not only put out, but the arrangements. And it's very interesting. The, uh, the history of, of actually Tejano music. Which is uh, uh, you know, uh, now being an educator, I'm I'm kind of delving into histories because it's something that we have to do, you know. And as you you've described it before, it's it's a marriage between a, a German polka and oh, yeah. 
and and but but what you guys did, because I consider you guys are the uh, the forefront of Tejano music. There was a lot of jazz influence in there yeah. from the very beginning, and that's where I I started hearing different types of voices, voicings. Not yeah, voices yeah. in my head, voicings. <laughs> you know, uh, oh, we always hear, we hear those anyway. But, uh, yeah, yeah. No, you were right, and uh, as uh, like I described, the kind of music, the uh, true the kind of music. There's only one style, but true the kind of music is a horn band first and foremost. Ah, right. It's a horn band, and and I say two or more horns constitute a horn section. One horn does not make a horn section. Right. So. Real Tejano and truth are not, uh, not uh, saying anything, uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. negative about anybody, other group. But if you really want to say what is Tejano music, it's a horn band. It's a Chicano, Mexican-American, taking uh, our parents, the Mexico, the Mexican song, and everything we grew up listening to, putting into that 2-4 beat polka arrangement. You know, we grew up with big band, man, from get go. I grew up, I was born in a house in a neighborhood that's predominantly black. So I don't know what I heard first, or the blues or the ranchera. Wow. Know, and, the, and the big band. And, and Tejano, true Tejano music, uh, Isidro Lopez invented it, created it, 1956. And from there, groups like ourselves, we doing the Latin ears, and Sun in the Sunliners, and a bunch of other ones. Sun in the Sun. From that, yeah, sun, sun glows became sunliners. Uh, we were co-creators without realizing that we were creating a genre. And the template was formed between 56 and 68, I would say. After that, everybody embellished it. But the, 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 the mold was made within that period of time. And, yeah. and it's, a, it's a horn band. If you want to be true Tejano, it's two horns or more. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I, I must give credit to your, uh, the arrangers. The arrangers, because I'm going to play uh, one more uh, one more tune here. And this is the arrangement where I heard and analyzed the sound of a 13 flat nine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, this yeah. is... Yeah, this is really amazing, and I I want to share this with you guys right now because it's uh, um, it it's it was so, the evolution of the Tejano music, you know. Oh my God! Mm -hmm. I'll tell you something about the intro in a minute. Okay. Pretendiendo humillarme pregonaste El haber diseñado mi pasión Y fingiendo una honda pena imaginaste Que moriría de desesperación El que tú has medido 
Oh my God! I got total goosebumps. <laughs> I got tears streaming down my face right now, man. It's just, you know, that's right. My God, that's um, that's what got me. I, I probably heard that the first time when I was like 14 years old, for uh, and it probably just came out, you know, and it just uh. Even back then, the first time that I heard it, th this is a marriage between Latin music and jazz. It is. Yeah. Uh, and when you think about it, uh, <clears throat> Maestro Joe Gallardo uh, did the, the whole album in that session, Para la Gente, with uh, uh, Viajera, you know, Estando Yo Contigo, and all those songs, from the Salvo Los Campos. That, that had never been done by Tejano music artists. It was the first Tejano polka to be recorded with strings, you know. Um, yeah. And uh, it was the first of many things. And uh, Gallardo is the one that brought that to the table when we formed, when we went from Luz Don de the Latinos to Luz uh, Don La Familia because of, uh, it was a, uh, a movement uh, uh, transaction of the names because of, of the uh, movement of La Onda de la Raza and the political uh, the scene back then. That's why, uh, uh, you know, La Familia meant not just me and Joe brothers, you know, but um, Mexico and us brothers, Central and South America and Chicano brothers. That's La Familia, you know. And the two-headed eagle on the cover signified as uh, me and Joe, brothers, and uh, uh, United States and Mexico, you know, brothers, hermanos, with our Mexican family. Uh, my parents were born in, and came from Mexico. And that's what all that movement did. And then uh, Joe, uh, uh, we formed La Familia, and Gallardo came in with Gilbert Cedeno keyboards and uh, and uh, that's what transpired. Wow. And it made, it made the, the, the evolution of Tejano music, you know. We went from two horns, an alto and a tenor, to the Dallas Symphony with La Familia, uh, six, five horn sections, uh, you know. And, and uh, as, uh, I was gonna tell you, the, uh, we didn't have synthesizers back then, I think. So, first of all, that's the first time I had ever sang that song. I'd never performed it. And I, Gallardo and Luzio told me to learn it, you know. And I didn't go to the studio. 
when they recorded it. So it was all new to me. And I humbly say this, it's a one take recording. <laughs> I, I didn't want to mess up. Gaelo was standing in front of me <laughs> in, in the recording studio. And he said, just follow my lead. Because I didn't know about the intro. And he says, there's a little pro intro to it, you know, just sing, sing it. And, and I'll uh, cue you in and everything. And I said, I'm only going to do this one. <laughs> <laughs> so did you have the lyrics in front of you or? Yeah, I learned the song, but uh -huh. I didn't know the arrangement, you know. Yeah. And he said, before we go into a time, you know, it, it's a prelude and like, da, 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 da. And, and in, in half time or no time, you know, you, you're going to be singing, I'll cue you. And just think, pretendiendo mi arma. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, he was, and I was following him. And, 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 and therefore, uh, believe it or not, it's a one-take uh, recording. Jesus. I mean, so so and, yeah, uh, that, that whole front part is, is a rubato. It, it feels rubato. You know, so for you to find yourself. Yeah, right, yeah. And, and that's why I'm saying uh, uh -huh. I, I, I was scared, you know. <laughs> and I had the master in front of me. And I said, do it and get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's the way it, it, yeah. he, 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 he coached me as I was doing it. But yeah. what I was going to tell you that's fascinating me about uh, is that uh, you hear the very end of the, the bell, you know, and the yeah. wind. Okay, that wind, because we didn't have synthesizers at the time. Um, they right where we're let's, let's do this and, and and we need a sound effect and we need some wind. So Joe and I stood in front of the microphone and we took turns and said, so uh, "I'll be first, and then before before I run out of breath, you come in. <laughs> before you run out of breath, I'll come in." So we all come in. <laughs> I mean, right on the microphone, and, we took turns, and that's what you hear as the wind sound effect. Man, that's what well, nobody would ever know that, Johnny. Nobody would ever know that. Oh. To the wind. To the wind. The wind, yeah. The wind. The wind. <laughs> but that's how we did it with a second turn, so that you can have that. And now I'm, we were touching the. The microphone yeah. with it, you, know, yeah. you can hear it. Uh, yeah, I, when I said they're turning, they're turning blue. They're not, <laughs> uh, I remember, um, man, I, I I always had a vision of you guys putting a uh, 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 58 or something right outside the door. It was a Texas day, you know, with Wendy and everything. That's fascinating. Uh, yeah. No, no, that's how we did it, you know. Wow. And the whole thing about the whole, <laughs> that, 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 the recording, the track that I'd never seen it before. They told me to learn it, and I did. And then, and he got out of it. Says, "Okay, I'm gonna be right in front of you." <laughs> <laughs> Man, said, all right. You know, that, uh, I love that. It came off, you know. Yeah, it's just just a beautiful recording. It and, and what makes it beautiful is it, it sounds like it was recorded live. When they recorded the horns and the strings, were, were they overdubs or was that all in one chingasso? Uh, like I said, uh, no, they were, uh, I wasn't there for the recording, but I was there for some of the other recordings that they had strings as well. And of course, what we would do is uh, record the rhythm section yeah, yeah. and uh, and then uh, put the horns in, overdub whatever needs to be overdub, and then bring in the strings uh -huh. and guy out of the just direct them uh, and, and uh, yeah. get the strings. Where, 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 where was it recorded? In Dallas, Texas. Okay. I forget the uh, name of the studio now. Dallas something recording studio. It was a really nice. Uh, I was sitting on the carpet uh, watching them record uh, uh, some of the other songs, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, yeah, it was very uh, first time thing, man. <laughs> Fascinating, man. So that's a little bit of the history of Johnny Hernandez. Any Any questions for Johnny? <laughs> That's cool. 
<laughs> I have a question for Johnny here. Was was that a song that you necessarily wanted to record, or they had uh, presented it to you? I, I believe uh, Gallardo might have come up with the song because um, he was he took on the project of, of producing the whole album. You know, as, uh, well, I'm sorry, as, we had already done uh, uh, Las Nubes. Right. You know, on, on para la gente. The second album was Total, and, and we called it Total. And uh, and Joe, little Joe, and Joe Gallardo were scheming about you know what the album was going to be like and all of that. But the song was complimented, was beautiful, and um, they presented it to me, you know. And they said, okay, we'd like for you to learn this song, and they gave me a probably a copy of. I don't remember really, but uh, it had to be something from the uh, 30s or something like that mm-hmm. by uh, Pedro Infante or somebody in that uh, time frame. You know, so I just learned it. And I figured it was going to be like that <laughs> when I went <laughs> to the studio. <laughs> you know? And did and, you like it when it was done or did you? Uh, yeah, I loved it. Uh, I liked it when they showed it to me, you know. Uh, you know, uh, I love melody. Uh, the way I, I tell anybody who asks me about learning a song, I always tell them that you've never heard before. Learn the melody first. You can always read the words, but the lyrics. But you got to learn the melody. And uh, I'm a, a melody kind of... Uh, anything that Dave Taylor, you know, uh, Paul McCartney... Stevie Wonder. Uh, my favorite tune by Stevie Wonder is Overjoyed, you know. Yeah. And that melody is incredible, you know. So when they brought me Total, <clears throat> and it had that free <clears throat> intro thing, you know, I said, that's interesting, you know. <laughs> and the only, the only other one that I had done like that is Min Vessels. Oh, that's enough. Yeah. That's yeah, another one. Yeah. Yeah. You, you have the intro and then you go into it, you know. So yeah. when you bring me beautiful melodies, I, I, I stay on it until I memorize it, you know. Yeah. And yeah. And that, uh, after the recording and everything, and we listen to the mix and, and uh, the, you know, so you really don't know what it's all going to sound like or what uh, you're building until you mix it, you know, right. and then you hear the whole thing back and then you, uh, you go, oh, so that's what Joe was hearing in, <laughs> in his mind. Yeah. You know, that's what was on his mind. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Man, that's beautiful, man. And, uh, I, I just, I, I just needed to bring that up while I had the chance because I've always wanted to talk to you about this, especially this particular tune, you know, because it's, uh, Las Nubes, of course, that's a, my God, that, yeah. that's an anthem, you know, yeah, uh, as, as well as Mil Vesos, too. You know. Well, Las Nubes, uh, when it became the anthem because of the movement, también, because Cesar Chavez heard it, and, and uh, uh, I think that's how he, he mentioned Little Joe to somebody, and they said, well, let's get them together, and because of Las Nubes, and then uh, Cesar Chavez, um, took it to the farm workers and would play it for them. Yeah. Uh, while they were working out in the field, you know, and it just became like adopted by them and it just snowballed, you know, and it, oh. it's just like, you know, as, as that song is, is poetry to me, uh, I love movies. The real meaning is, par- you know, parallel, I guess you would say, the lyrics to what it really means, you know, that uh, 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 a man representing the human race out ready to give up there's nothing left he's contemplating suicide yeah there's nothing left in life for him wow. and uh, God is watching it and he says uh, no, go over there and pick up some water and bring it over and pick water and pour it uh, on this man so it will refresh. 
It'll refer to spirit and revive his body, you know. That's what Los Angeles is about. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's kind of fun. Yeah, I get choked up when I talk about it. Oh, of course. That. Deep song, man. Yeah. yeah. But now, Johnny, when, when um, you're re recording that, the, was that, did you know what, any idea what the significance would be or in your mind, well, it's just another track that's, we're filling yeah, an album up with? Good, good question, because we actually did Las Nubes as the Latin ears when we first started out. And, um, well, I, I started with the, the Latin ears in 62 there. They started in 50. Seven or eight, and yeah. um, and we in in sixty three I think we recorded it three four walls with just you know the two horns, and it was nice and it was a beautiful song, but uh, it was just one of the songs. But when we did it with La Familia, and the spring concept came in, and all of that, and then we really understood more what the song was saying you know and and yes at that time we we, we kind of thought wait a minute you know this is a, a really special song and uh and then with the with the music added to it it uh, just uh, put it all together and, and made it the beautiful uh, the song that it turned out to be and and yes we realized that it was very special. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Nice. I wanted to touch on all these, um, on all this, just so everybody kind of uh, can understand the history of it and how how it applies to this uh, particular tune. You know, so um, I'm just. I'd like to say something about your song, um, mm -hmm. and the style that that you did. The song is uh, it, it's very modern, yet to me, with the beautiful uh, horn doing the, the melody the way it does, Brendan, you know, and it has a flavor to me of like um, uh, back when you see uh, film or movies from the 20s or 30s or something like that, you know. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it, it takes me there, and then it kind of brings you right back once you start singing it. You know? yeah. it it's a mixture of styles there that you, you hit on, <laughs> on, you know. Thank you so much. Then uh, my, my brothers got involved, and they put their own flavor to it, you know. Yes, sir. Artie! Um, very, very touching, man. They, yeah. And, you know, Thank you. And, yeah. It, it, that's why I'm telling you. It, it, uh, I was reading the comments and uh, they just loved it. You know? So uh, you got to keep promoting it, marketing it, and let the world see it. Yeah. Hmm. That's that's my hope. It's um, uh, it's fantastic. So, right. so jo uh, Johnny Hernandez, if you if you haven't met Johnny Sandoval, he's uh he's down here. He's uh he's got a gig in Hawaii, right? But he's the one's playing drums. Next to Renee. I, I, oh, yeah. 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 My pleasure, Johnny. Absolutely. Yeah, Johnny and I, uh, well, Johnny with the Navarros, he has a, quite a history. <laughs> we would, uh, I, I've known Johnny since he was, since he was 14 years old, you know, so Johnny and David, my little brother, they're, they're the same age, you know, and Johnny and I actually, okay, we're going to get into this history now. Johnny and I, we moved to L.A. Uh, the same time, and we actually, uh, uh, Rene Camacho got us the apartment right above him. And that was the funnest time I've ever had in my life, right? It's like uh, uh, two guys, man, we were, we were big fish in, in Phoenix, and then we come to L.A. where the only one that knew us was Rene. <laughs> <laughs> right? I thought you were going to say the landlady. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, the landlady. Oh yeah, uh, actually, Renee had to pull a couple of movidas for us. You know, there's a ghost in the <laughs> Hello, 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 Artie, you're muted. 
Does he have three pair of glasses on? <laughs> he, he can see the future. <laughs> He's burning a hole through the screen. <laughs> Artie, can you hear us? Can see the future. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up if you can if you can hear us. Artie, can you hear us? <laughs> Is it him? <laughs> well, as um, as what kind? Uh, I feel like uh, it's winding down. With that being said, let's go in and check out our little masterpiece of a song here. Right. And, oh, imagine that they got Renee Camacho playing bass on it, acoustic bass shit. That's right. That's yeah. Incredible. That's right, Holmes. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Everybody can do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's see here. Hermano querido, hermano, ay Dios mío ya viejo. Oh, my little brother. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sin pensar del dolor o de, del dolor. Okay. Del dolor que causé uh, entre tu corazón. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, we should get a Pulitzer Prize for this one. Okay, let's see. Let's... <laughs> okay, so, so, uh, uh, pero, pero un día me fui. Uh, sigue me. cantando las canciones que con emociones nos hizo llorar pero un día me fui yo seguí mi camino sin pensar del dolor que Dentro de tu corazón Hermano querido, hermano Ay Dios mío, ya viejos estamos Alegría en nuestra familia Celebramos nuevos cumpleaños Ay, familia, querida familia, no 
nos amamos con todo el alma. Siento hermano, solo pido que tú me perdones porque te ofendí, te lo juro por Dios, que te entrego mi vida. Porque somos hermanos de pura familia y del corazón. Hermano querido, hermano, ay Dios mío, ya viejos estamos. Alegría en nuestra familia. Celebramos nuevos cumpleaños, hay familia querida, familia. Nos amamos con todo el alma. <laughs> I'm glad you used the uh, the upright instead of a regular. Yes. Oh uh, yeah, that was, that was a good point, <laughs> Yeah, that's you a good point. Right there, no monitors, no app. <laughs> yeah. New man base. Yeah, <laughs> that, that yeah. was a good call on that. Yeah, actually, we had talked about that. Should it be a, a, an acoustic upright or a, the the big guitarron, right? Or the right. Uh, yeah. Right. No, that was that was cool. There's a nice nice flavor to it. it that sound, you know. the acoustic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have a question for Mr. Brandon Fields. Yeah. It's like when a pros, I don't I don't know if you've ever done a ranchera before, but yeah, what approach did you take just because it, it's so haunting coming in that just makes it so distinctive? Well, I think it's like Johnny said earlier, it's just about the melody. You just if you like and and let you know embrace ballads and romantic melodies, it's just you fall into it, what, regardless of what you know particular rhythm it might be. And also, that the first music I ever played in Santa Ana was a band called Los Chicos. We were playing; it was hilarious because we played rancheras and uh, cumbias and all kinds of stuff, but we'd also play Tower Power songs. <laughs> <laughs> it was a family band. And the, uh, the one was a keyboardist and the drummer were the kids. And the dad came out and he sang some tunes, you know, but it was like, you know, we'd sing, he'd sing Rosa Maria and then we'd turn on and, and play Oakland Stroke. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, like, but that was the first, you know, that was my early gigging experience when I was 16, 17. Was, you know, yeah, yeah that, that's awesome. Because with all the friends and family that I've listened to it with, the first thing you hear when they, Hear that intro, it's oh wow. Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. beautifully it's done, beautiful. brother. No, the, your tone is extremely beautiful. Wow. Definitely. Man. Hey, can you hear me now? <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna wrap it up now. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. <laughs> talk to you guys all night long and say, man, these guys. You don't want to talk to me, man. <laughs> what the hell, man? <laughs> I'll tell you, man, it was 
beautiful. When Joey sent me like the rough, the rough cut of him, just how the song was going to go. Chingao, man, I heard it. And it really got to me, you know, and my soul. And by the second time I heard it, I was just crying like a baby. <laughs> you know, it, it was yeah. beautiful, man. And uh, I, you know, when showed it to other people and stuff, it seems to affect everybody. There's something about it that just grabs you, man, you know, especially yeah. if, you have, if you have siblings, you know, and you're close and, and you guys did a great job. Thank and you. uh was really after good. I heard it, man, Renee, I told Joey that you should be playing uh, the upright. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it was Ross's idea. It was Ross's idea. But, uh, yeah. I love your work, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. And that's that's very exciting, you know, but uh, you gotta be older, you know. Yeah, yeah. Man, and I'm so glad to have Johnny Sandoval on there because uh, the the way Johnny played it was very traditional. No symbol with the brushes, you know, and watching your brush work, it, it was it was beautiful. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thanks, Joy. Yeah, it's just that I yeah, listened to Johnny, it. And that's I felt it. Yeah, I was gonna ask you. I wanted to ask you, Johnny, how how'd you uh, come up with that? Just just <laughs> that's how it felt. Yeah, well, Joey kind of sang me, sang me the part a little bit, and there was a chart. He sent the chart, and I, what I did was I, I just like my own thing was I said put sweeps in there. You know, he had to chat, chat, get to bat instead of chat, chat, chat. So we did like a halftime uh, backbeat waltz, and then I just snuck a brush in there, a sweep in there, yeah, to jazz it up a little bit, and uh, Joey. Joey loved it. It just fit, you know, and I did listen to it a lot because I did want to nail it as good as I could. Well, the upright bass, uh, the, uh, I love uh, the snare drum, you know, the, the uh, brushes, you know. And if you want to listen to uh, the, uh, the 50, 50 yeah. writer and so they were all using brushes back then, man. You know, it was wow. Yeah. I never really paid attention to, you know, in the past few years. And a lot of them were using uh, uh, brushes. So it gives it, that's way it has that sound. So yeah. It, it feels really nice. Yeah, I, I love it. Just in case it came out great. And uh, man, I, I'm i just um, so happy that Joey asked me to do it and, you know, and that it came out nice. And I think it's amazing. I think everybody on it's just amazing from the start to finish. Yeah, man, I, I'm a lucky guy, man. You know, uh, and I knew uh, yeah. Son of All. I knew he was a fan <laughs> from the very beginning. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, what the heck? <laughs> what was that eruption? <laughs> I think somebody. I think somebody just so, ranked on me. I'm a lucky guy, and Johnny goes, "Yeah." He <laughs> 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 got me to play. You got that right, buddy. <laughs> you got that right, Buckle. Oh, not lucky because of me. <laughs> oh, <okay>. ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh man. But there's a lot of lot of history here, man. Shit. Oh. It's an honor to be talking to you, Mr. Hernandez, man. You've been an inspiration for Thank throughout you. my life, man. You know, and me and you are probably the only two cotton pickers in this group. Hey, you know? you're there, brother. <laughs> hey, hey. You know, <laughs> I did it too, you know, a long time ago, but that's uh it's a good of its own, man. Hey. <laughs> When I when I uh, when I first got on Facebook, uh, I started talking about that and reminding people about from Scotland, you know, and they're oh hey I remember that. Mm -hmm. no, nobody was talking about it, and uh, and then they said you know I'm from Kingston, Texas, and I'm from uh, Amarillo, and my and a lot of families uh, were, you know crossing the state back and forth. And they say, you know what, we were there when you were there. Playing you, Texas, we're picking cotton. And the conversation started getting uh, 
you know, it was wider and wider about that cotton picking days. And I kind of revived uh, those days in their mind that nobody had talked about, you mm -hmm. know, and then I wrote the book, The Cotton Picker, you know, yeah. and, so, and uh, they asked me why I called it that. And I just said, well, because I'm a cotton picker. Uh, I do other things, but I'm a cotton picker. <laughs> That's what I was born into. You know? That was my that was my first job with the whole familia going out and doing it. You there know? you go. That's it. You know, you know, not just you know, my tios, my grandfather, and the whole even the my tias and stuff. I mean, the whole family out there, man. You know, mm -hmm. it was a, it was not recreational. It was it was a survival. That's what you yeah. did. And you know, exactly. You know, the minute a child started walking, I saw a bunch of pitos, little piles of, of the way in front of the, the adult and, and make little little hills of, of, uh, of cotton so that when the, the adult got there, he didn't have to do it. He just put it in his, in his sack, you know, wow, and yeah. let move him on a little faster. So it was, it was a real deal. Uh, I think they told me that when I was, uh, before I was able to go out and help, they tied me to a tree so that I wouldn't wander off because uh, nobody was a babysitter, you know? So they yeah. just tied me to a tree, to a tree and keep them all. <laughs> 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 and the family, the family was picking cotton, you know? <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, man. That's the way it was, man, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, things were scared. different, man. Yeah. So when they they come back and get you, you were like, rawr, 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 rawr. <laughs> I said, biting everybody, man. <laughs> yeah. It's good to keep an eye on you, you know, and you don't wander off. You know? <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Not tie me on the tree with a rope, you know, so I had a little walking area there. You know? I do you know it's can't believe I'm here chatting with Johnny Hernandez, man. You know? uh, it's my pleasure, gentlemen. Man, you know, I've uh, seen your picture since the '60s, man. <laughs> you know, from all the albums and stuff, man. We had a milk crate full of. I mean, and it's a tempo. That's how you learn the tunes. You know, you just listen to them, man. It was all exactly. the albums. Yeah. There was no tapes. And there was nothing. And those records, man, they were all scratched up. Cause what was that party? Yeah. Okay, one more time. <laughs> What's up? Of course, man. Now I'm online and doing lyrics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. You guys have been uh, inspirational, man, for for us for oh, yeah. decades, yeah. man. You know. Yeah. It's an honor, man. <laughs> My honor. Uh, if you look at all the uh, the different decades, it's funny because first we're uh, wearing. Uh, tailor-made suits, shiny suits like like the fit of the, the, the Little Richard and all those we were wearing. We got some tailor-made suits, gold and red satin and everything. And then we became hippies all of a sudden. Hey. Long hair and that tall, tore up it all. <laughs> uh, and, and then a, a decade or so later, we're cowboys. We were <laughs> and, and all kinds of stuff. And there was something else, and you know, it, uh, it got a little confusing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you covered the spectrum, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and, and Johnny, the... when, when you were breaking in, uh, who inspired you or who were you trying to mimic vocally? Jimmy Clanton. Just Jimmy Clanton. Jimmy Clanton? Yeah, just a dream, just a dream. That's the song that got me on stage and kicked off my career. De veras, wow. Yeah. Uh. But it's really nice talking to everybody and uh, and reminiscing and, and all because of this project that you did that um, awakened the spirits, I think, of people. It's like you were saying ahorita, that it, it's... Uh, First time you heard it brought you to tears. I was saying earlier, literally when I posted it on Facebook, uh, I have a lot of people that that follow, and they all loved it. And some people started saying it brought me to tears, you know, literally. And it, it's a beautiful, 
arrangement and the message and the family singing it, the whole package works, you know. So it's, uh, it's uh, I hope it just goes uh, uh, viral and it just goes. Well, it's, it, yeah, it's a very unique uh, concept that you guys came with porque everything's, you know, my querida madrecita, mi padrecito. Yeah. Right. No, no, nobody. Uh, the the siblings have been a, a neglected market, <laughs> you know, in yeah, in yeah. all of music. So. <laughs> yes, good, good way of putting that. It's time to talk about the siblings and uh, and uh, like looking back, Texas. Time to get back to the uh, what does it say? The roots of things, you know. Uh huh. Um, looking back, Texas. You know. Yeah, it's it's a good project. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I felt that it reached back in time, the style, like you said, of the 20s and the 30s, and yeah. it, it paid a little homage to my grandfather. They're, eran siete carnales, los vias, you know, yeah. in the 30s, and they played that, that I thought, man, you know, it paid homage to them, the sty that style and stuff, you know? That's exactly. Uh, let me give you an example of what what I'm trying to uh, uh, relay, as you're saying, is you know on the Godfather movie, the Godfather Part Two, when it went back in time to New York City with Robert De Niro, you know, and and then they went back into uh, uh, Italy, and, and and not Italy, even uh, uh, Sicily, Sicily. The Corleone. The Corleone. That's the kind of feeling that I get with the intro, you know, those times. And then if you were doing a soundtrack for that kind of scenery, you know, it would fit in real good, you know. And then it pulls you in once you start singing the, 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 song, the Rampera. It brings you back up, you know. But yeah, it, it takes you takes you back. Yeah. Oh. Hey guys, I gotta get off to this gig. So man, it's such a pleasure uh, me and seeing uh, all see this. All Thank you, Lenny, Johnny, Santa Paul, brothers. You guys, you guys are my bros, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. See you guys soon. All, all right, right, bro. Have a good gig. Bye, guys. Love you all. Take a. Thank you, Brandon. Okay. Yeah. It was an honor having you. Thank you, Brandon. Thanks for the great, great song. Great to see the all the Navarro boys. Easy, <laughs> <laughs> Brandon. Good seeing you, Joey. I got to get going too, man. But thank you guys. It was great seeing you, Johnny. Love thank to see you again, brother. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Renee. Post it, man. Orale. Orale. Thank you. Later, brother. Later. Johnny Hernandez, thank you so much, my brother. Thank you for doing this for us, man. This is uh, special. Uh, this this recording here is epic, especially in our family, man. But there was so many special moments within this meeting itself. I think we all learned a lot, and uh, and uh, I'm really excited well, about the potential for this song. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you for inviting me. And I really, I mean, it's an honor as a president. And to talk to all of the gentlemen here, all the guys, and as far as uh, to your family, please give them my best. Like I said, the reason we became popular and, and the lead near to the familia was not just music, it was the family that, that made it happen. And we never forget that. So please say a little all, all of your family. We appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Gracias, and Johnny. If I if I may just say this this night tonight, they say don't meet your idols because you only be disappointed. But tonight I have three of my idols that I'm looking at right now. Y gracias, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for what you were able to do with my brother here, and it's I'm so grateful for this moment. This will certainly be a highlight of my life. Gracias por todo. Thank Same you. here, brother. It's been an honor, man. By the uh, same thing, you know, we got to get together, and we will when I come down there sooner or later, and we got to talk about uh, 
कान फेंकल गई फैंटास्टिक <laughs> Hermano querido, hermano, ay Dios mío, ya viejos estamos. Alegría en nuestra familia. Celebramos nuevos cumpleaños. Ay familia querida, familia Nos amamos con todo el alma.